The Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon is getting a ton of buzz in the community. And today, I'm gonna go over some of the top questions. My name's Jim, and this is The Edge of Tech. About two weeks ago, I did a video about this Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. It has absolutely blown up in the community since then, and that is awesome. Actually, as of the filming of this video, their Kickstarter almost has $5.2 million in backing already. With all the excitement around this printer, the community just has a ton of questions. Well, today I'm gonna to be answering some of those questions that came in on the first video. Let's do it. We'll start with Sideburn Studios. They ask if replacement parts will be available. And the easy answer is yes. Bamboo Lab already stated that they're gonna have replacement parts for the consumables, for breakage, for warranties, that kind of stuff. And that those parts will probably be in not only China, but in the EU and the USA as well. So yes, there will be replacement parts. Now it might take them a little while to get there because they gotta produce all these printers that they're selling first, but they will have replacement parts for us if something goes wrong. Next up, we have a question from the padded cell. The padded cell asks a three part question, I believe, or three different questions. Number one, why does it say you can use up to 16 filaments if the AMS only stores four? Well, the answer is because they say you can link up to four of these units together to give you 16 total filaments, colors, or types of different filament. It's pretty awesome when you look at it, and I cannot wait to get my hands on that. I know I'm gonna link up another one as soon as I get one, so watch for that video. Next he says, does the RFID indicator mean that only bamboo approved filament will work? And the answer is no. Any filament that will fit in the AMS up here will work. And if it doesn't work up top, you can always drop it behind on the spool holder behind. Now, the cool thing about using their RFID filament is not only will their filament be tuned for the machine, because that's what they're trying to do, the machine will actually recognize what kind of filament it is and stuff like that right from the spool. Now, again, you don't have to use their filament, but it's cool that they come with a full ecosystem. So you know if you use Bamboo Lab PLA or PETG or ABS, it's gonna work in the machine, the spools are gonna work, and it's gonna read the spool for you, and the machine will know what's loaded. The other cool thing is their spools are master spools. They're, they come apart, you can reload them, and I really like that, especially when we're trying to keep more plastic out of the landfills. <laughs> and the third question is kind of an interesting one. It is, how do they guarantee support removal on parts when they don't even know what you're gonna be printing? Now, I'm guessing that you're asking about removing the supports from prints from this machine. I believe what they are saying is that their support structure, how they use the supports in the slicer, are just supposed to be super easy to remove. You can use a support material, uh, like an interface between to make it even easier. You can use water soluble supports, that kind of thing. But I believe what they're saying is that how they have it tuned and how you can slice it makes supports super easy to remove. I have not really found any issues with removing the supports. It's actually been pretty easy. Uh, I mean, I think it's pretty dialed in, but they're still working on the software, so it can only get better. Quick break. By now, you probably realize the awesome t-shirt that I'm wearing. Actually, this video is sponsored by Into the AM, and I absolutely love their t-shirts. They are crazy soft, and the designs and the colors just pop. I really do like these. They reached out to me, they noticed I wore a lot of t-shirts on my videos, and they said, hey, do you wanna try out ours? And I absolutely did. I checked them out, and these you're gonna be seeing in a lot more videos. I, I really do love them. The length is great. It's like right down here. This is a 2XL, which is awesome. Uh, there's the only logos are on the side, which is really cool into the AM little logo down here. Um, it's hard to see on the camera, but, but the graphic tees are amazing. There's a ton of different designs and you can check them out. Also, you can get just plain tees if you want to as well. The cool thing is they have a deal where you can get three graphic tees for $60 or you can get three plain tees for $49.95. And I promise you that these will be maybe the softest shirts you'll ever wear as far as t-shirts go. But it gets even better. Check out the link in the description down below and you can save 10% with that special link on top of the three for 60 deal already. So use that link, save yourself some money and check out these t-shirts. There's all sorts of stuff on their website. In the comments below, let me know what t-shirt you like the best of this video. I'm curious to see what it is because I know which one I like the best. Now back to it. Next up, we have a question from Let's Make It Happen TV. 
They say, I haven't read or found anything about printing TPU. Well, I can tell you that it does. I have printed a ton of TPU tracks for a tank on this thing, uh, like 90 of them. Um, actually, I use the back spool holder because that's what Bamboo Lab recommends you do. They don't recommend putting it through the AMS because it's very floppy when you use TPU and it could get caught in there somewhere. So you want to try to avoid that. Uh, Tom or Filament Frenzy has run the harder TPUs, I think it was 95, uh, through this and he didn't have too much issues. But I would suggest using it straight from the back spool holder. It does print very well, it's very fast and uh, you'll see those tank treads in a video coming up soon. Our next question comes from Pat Coleman. Pat asks, what's the status of the bamboo slicer for the Mac OS? And is it gonna be available through like the Apple App Store, that kind of thing? Well, I can tell you this, as of filming this right now, I know they're working on it currently, um, they're still developing the Windows slicer and the mobile uh, iOS and Android slicers and apps as well. Uh, I, it's not released yet, but they're saying that they're gonna have it out before these ship, which will be awesome. I hope that's true. And I know it's gonna be every bit as great as the Windows one. Uh, they're, they're just trying to get it ready before they push it. They don't wanna publish it if it's not ready to go. But it will be available for the Mac OS soon. The next question comes to us from Noid. Noid asks, is my last video an ad or a review? Well, it was neither. It was a first look at the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, which I was super excited for, and as you could tell, I still am. This printer is literally a game changer in the 3D printing community, and it's gonna cause other companies to do double takes and to make their stuff even better, because you have to now. It was a first look at a printer that I'm super excited about, and as you can tell by the almost $5.2 million in backers on Kickstarter, a lot of other people are excited about this printer too. Now I probably will do a full review later on, but I'm pretty sure there's gonna be a ton of those out there, so we'll see. <laughs> Next up is a question from 2B3D Printed. They say, by the way, is that a huge dent in the back of the machine? What happened? Well, I tell you what, FedEx happened. When I got the box, it was crushed in at the point which was the back of the machine. FedEx let something happen to this thing. Something must have hit this thing at really hard force and the whole box was caved in. This thing came packed really well, but FedEx always breaks stuff. <laughs> it has not affected the printer or the printing at all. And I believe Bamboo Lab might even send me a new back panel just because. But I don't really need it. I kind of like the character. But thanks FedEx, I appreciate it. Another new shirt, man. This thing is awesome. This might be one of my favorite new shirts. Bam! Another new shirt from Into the AM. <laughs> this one might be my favorite of the ones I got. I, I love this shirt. Okay, the next question we have is from Red Potato. And by the way, I love that name. They say, are you sure this is a heated chamber? There's no heat unit beyond the bed and hot end, right? And that is absolutely true. It's not heated. There's not a self heater or anything like that in the chamber, but the bed and the hot end will keep it nice and warm. And then there's a fan that controls the heat. So if you need to be at 50 C or 60 C inside the chamber, uh, there's a fan in there that will release or hold in air to keep it warmer or cooler. I've seen some other people out there testing. I've seen them test with like a towel over the top without it, that kind of thing. And they are getting up to like 70 C in the chamber with like a towel over it. But uh, 50 to 60 C in the chamber is very common uh, right out of the box and that's super cool. Next up, we have a question from James Aldridge. He says, is this a good hassle-free printer? And I could say this has been about as hassle-free as I've ever had. Uh, right out of the box, this thing does very well. Again, remember, software is not there fully yet. Firmware, they're still working on it as well. But as far as the machine goes, it has performed very well with very little bugs right out of the box. That being said, there's always gonna be maintenance, there's always gonna be parts that break, etc. So you're gonna have to find parts like we talked about earlier, or maybe do a little maintenance and swap some stuff out. But I tell you what, Right out of the box, this is the printer to get if you can afford it. If you're a beginner, you don't wanna mess around, you want something that prints fast, definitely check out the Bamboo Lab X1 or X1 Carbon. Out of the box, it's the way to go. David M states, I would love to see a multicolor print. Well, I tell you what, David M, 
Uh, in the very beginning of getting this, I started posting pictures of my prints and Tom, also known as Filament Frenzy, started commenting on them. Immediately, I knew I had to try to get Tom one. I reached out to Bamboo Lab, I connected him with Tom. And if you go check out Filament Frenzy's pages, Facebook, Twitter, etc., you will see he is doing absolutely amazing stuff with multicolor prints. And he is the top person in the community that needed to have one of these to help us tune this AMS to get it dialed in for the rest of us. So they sent him one and he's been printing on it since using about stock settings, maybe a little sprinkle of magic in his words. He's printed a couple of mandrels, I believe two mandrels already on this and they came out just absolutely amazing at blazing fast speeds. But check out his page. He has a ton of stuff, multicolor that he's printed and he is the master. He is the one we need to listen to on the multicolor prints. Next on the list, we have Nick Grover. He says, any idea what other manufacturers make spools that are the same size as the ones that fit with Bamboo Lab? He would hate to miss out on using the rainbow, etc. I have talked to Bamboo Lab specifically about this and they are actually in the process of acquiring all the different types of spools that people use. And they're gonna test them and they're gonna release a list of filaments and spools that fit in their AMS. But don't forget, even though it doesn't fit, doesn't mean you can't print with it. If it's too tall, all you have to do is leave your AMS open and it'll still roll in here. If it's too wide, it won't roll and you're gonna have some issues, but you can use the back spool holder or put your own spool holder next to this and that's just fine too. So really, it doesn't matter if it fits in the AMS or not because you're still gonna be able to use it on the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon and the X1 as well. Matter of fact, the X1 doesn't have the AMS unit, so it all is gonna work because it'll be on the spool in the back. So there you go. This name, I apologize if I just kill your name. I think it's Faraz or Faraz Khan. And you ask if I can please share the dimensions of the machine. Of course I can. I've got my tape measure here. So what we're gonna do is measure from bottom to top. And it looks like it's 26 and three quarters inches tall, or also known as about 68 centimeters from the bottom to the top of the AMS. If you're not using the AMS, it is 18 inches tall or roughly 45 and a half centimeters. So if I'm going wide, we're roughly, and I know these uh, are already readily available, the dimensions, but why not? Uh, if I'm going wide, it looks like 15 and a quarter inches wide or 39 centimeters, roughly about like that. If I'm going deep, I'm gonna measure to the spool holder. So I'm gonna make sure I get that depth for the spool holder there. And let's just start about right there with the spool holder. You're looking at about 18 and a half inches deep or roughly 47 centimeters. I think that does it for all of the different measurements. If you have any other questions, uh, shoot them in the comments below. Last but not least, one of the most question, nah, last but not least, one of the most asked questions that I see on my channel, on my videos and across everywhere is how is the customer support gonna be? And I can only attest to how it is right now and it has been absolutely amazing. They have been responding to me at all hours of the night, um, doing whatever they can do to answer any questions I have or help me remedy issues. Uh, if we need to work through a problem, they, they're on it right away. That being said, there's not a huge number of these out in the wild like everybody thinks. <laughs> so right now there's a small number and pretty soon there's going to be a huge number of these out in the wild in the next couple months. So uh, I believe there might be some growing pains, but I do know I've talked to them about this personally. They're hiring more people trying to get them up to speed. They're also working on more and more support videos. So we can just go watch videos if we need to know how to replace a hot end, how to replace another piece, um, what happens if you get a jam in your AMS, that kind of stuff. And one of the biggest things we get to rely on is our awesome 3D printing community. Now they already have a Facebook group and a Discord set up. If you wanna jump into those, I'll put links in the description below for those. So jump in. You can talk, you can ask some questions, but most of all, we can help each other out. If anybody has questions, we can all help each other out with the experiences we have with this thing, which is super cool. And that's why I love this 3D printing community. So let's build a big community around this Bamboo Lab X1 and X1 Carbon, uh, the machines that are gonna be released soon. 
I cannot wait for you guys to get them in your hands. It's, it's gonna be amazing. You guys are gonna have a lot of fun and Babu Lab has a lot of work to do to solidify the software and firmware, etc. before you get them. Let me know in the comments below if you guys have any more questions. Maybe it's something I didn't address or you want me to expand on it. I could do another one of these or I could do another live stream with Bamboo Lab and that would be pretty cool too. Also, don't forget to let me know which one of these awesome Into the AM t-shirts you like the best. The graphic tees I got, you saw three in this episode. And I absolutely, I, I really do. I love them. They are so soft. They're so nice. And they're definitely going into the rotation of my t-shirts. You probably will see at least one of these at Murph. I hope to see you at Murph in a couple weeks. And you'll definitely see this bad boy there too. So come check us out. If you're going to Murph, find a table and check out the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon Printing firsthand. By the way, check this video out right here if you haven't seen it yet.